Haruki Murakami's first major hit as an author was Norwegian Wood, a book about a young university student named Toru and his journey of understanding love, suicide, and life in 1960s Japan, and has exactly 63 songs mentioned throughout its 300 page length. That's approximately one piece of music referenced every five pages. The title of the book itself, Norwegian Wood, named after the famous Beatles song. You see, Murakami loves putting music in his work, but his books are never about music, save for one, but we'll get to that later. They're about finding parts of yourself and understanding how you fit and don't fit into society. And yet, you can see this passion for music in every one of his books. Kafka on the Shore, Colorless Tsukuru Tatsaki and his years of pilgrimage, South of the Border, West of the Sun, it goes on. So why is an author from a dominantly silent medium so consistently referring to music in his books. Haruki Murakami was born in Kyoto, Japan in 1949, grew up in Kobe, and eventually went to Waseda University in Tokyo in 1973. He majored in cinema and theater arts, and once he graduated, he opened a small jazz bar with his wife in Tokyo. Reading and music were huge influences in his life, but he never saw himself becoming a writer. Quote, the reason I did not think of becoming a writer is very simple. I felt that I possessed neither the talent nor the qualifications to be a good novelist, so I never felt like penning a novel. This changed when he had his now famous epiphany that sparked him to write. He was watching baseball and saw David Hilton of the Hiroshima Carp hit a double and thought, I can write. The simplicity of his epiphany is certainly out of the ordinary. Writing became his profession and his love of music seeped into every aspect of this. With over 10,000 vinyls in his collection and an undetermined amount of CDs, Murakami doesn't write a single page without listening to music in the background. Music has become such a staple to him and his readership that sites and playlists have been created solely to share his collection of jazz and classical music. His only book on music, titled Absolutely on Music, is a conversation between him and Seiji Ozawa, the former conductor of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. It showcased his abundance of knowledge in music and his love for it. So how does Murakami's love of music seep into his work? How does Murakami see music in relation to his writing? One of Murakami's principles is that music is never the focal point, but is always present. The music is heard, acknowledged, and left alone to play in the background. When the music is referenced, Murakami immediately shows the character's feeling of the situation rather than the music. The protagonist is focused on the emotions and connections they receive when listening to the music, tying the two together in the characters and now the reader's mind. The pieces of music he chooses are directly related to Murakami himself, jazz, classical music, and pop from the 60s and 70s. So why specifically these genres? The direct and easiest answer would be that Murakami knows these pieces of music best, and thus ensures that his characters and settings are related to this. This seems to be the case for the 60s and 70s pop music. However, for jazz and classical music, which tend to be more prevalent in his books regardless, it provides something more specific to their genre. Resonance. Classical music, and even more so with the improvisational aspect of jazz, is meant to be heard and perceived with little to no words involved. Classical music brings experiences to life for the listeners. For example, Vivaldi's Four Seasons Spring in E Major First Movement is split into three sections. The mimicking chirping birds as they return from a harsh winter. Then the looming of the thunderclaps as a storm appears and the rain comes crashing down. And finally, when the storm ends, the birds returning and life starting to begin anew. Instrumental jazz, however, is meant to invoke the feeling and emotion of an experience, rather than the direct experiences themselves. Listen to Round Midnight by Polonius Monk and see if you can pick up on a feeling of nighttime, how everything is slowed down and become more mysterious as a new day appears. Perhaps you can pick up on a different feeling than I did when listening to it. Murakami understands this and uses music to encapsulate memories and experiences into his characters. Scientifically, there's consistency in this methodology as well. Neuroscientists have found that the structure of music helps the hippocampus and the front cortex with memory. 
This structure is rhythm, rhyming, alliteration, melody, and images that spark to mind when hearing certain words or phrases. This is why putting words to music is the easiest way to invoke an explicit memory, i.e. specific words or phrases, and why music is so closely related to mnemonic devices. However, music is much more closely tied to implicit memory or emotionally driven memories. Psychologists have coined the term reminiscence bump, which is when a song takes you back to another time and place. For me, every time I hear Get Lucky by Daft Punk, I'm in first year university again. I remember Frosh Week, where I met many of my lifelong friends, where I learned to open up and become much more social compared to my socially awkward high school self. Aside from structure, music has another more hidden connection to memory, how social it is. Music tends to be in our lives during large social events. It is often played with our friends and family around us, like weddings, funerals, clubs, bars. It is played during those impactful moments in our lives, and a connection is made. Music is everywhere, especially in social gatherings. And those feelings of being around those important to us become closely tied to the songs we hear. And Murakami gets this. A chapter rarely goes by without mentioning a piece of music playing in the background. Murakami puts rhythm into his work that his readers can follow along to. And this rhythm is both in his musical choices and how he writes. This is a quote from Murakami's interview with the New York Times on music and its relation to writing. Whether in music or in fiction, the most basic thing is rhythm. Your style needs to have good, natural, steady rhythm or people won't keep reading your work. I learned the importance of rhythm from music and mainly from jazz. Next comes melody, which in literature means the appropriate arrangement of the words to match the rhythm. If the way the words fit the rhythm is smooth and beautiful, you can't ask for anything more. Next is harmony, the internal mental sounds that support the words. Then comes the part I like best, free improvisation. Through some special channel, the story comes welling out freely from inside. All I have to do is get into the flow. This is even more impressive considering that his work has been translated into 50 languages, which means that each translator needs to understand and properly transfer Murakami's flow, harmony, rhythm, and everything into a new language. Let's see how this harmony and flow works when listening to the music Murakami mentions in his book. Here's a piece from Norwegian Wood with the music mentioned playing and without it playing. I found a Bill Evans record in the bookcase and was listening to it while drying my hair when I realized that it was the record I had played in Naoko's room on the night of her birthday, the night she cried and I took her in my arms. That had happened only six months earlier, but it felt like something from a much remoter past. I found a Bill Evans record in the bookcase and was listening to it while drying my hair when I realized that it was the record I had played in Naoko's room on the night of her birthday, the night she cried and I took her in my arms. That had happened only six months earlier, but it felt like something from a much remoter past. Does the music heighten the impact of the scene? Does it help to visualize and understand what Toru is going through? Only you can answer these questions yourselves, but I can say that it does for me. Murakami mentions the record earlier in the book and asks the reader to follow along by listening to it again. The passage is written to give you how Toru is feeling as he relives his past, but by listening to the music ourselves, the reader can relive their own experiences within Murakami's book. The music isn't necessary for understanding the message. It only serves to amplify and clarify how our protagonist is emotionally responding. This is what makes all of Murakami's work so impactful. I can't listen to the Beatles' Norwegian Wood without thinking of Toru and his journey. And in a weird way, I know that Toru is thinking the same thing. It's what makes Murakami's characters and stories so grounded and real with a hint of surrealism and dreamlike wonder. But that's for another video. Haruki Murakami has found that music unlocks emotional resonance for experiences and memories, both for his characters and his readers. He asks the reader to join him in experiencing his work both through the written language and through music. It is not a necessity or crutch for him. He's too good a writer to be carried by the music but he knows when to let the music swell and support his message. He knows how to make a silent medium flourish with sound.